Here's what they don't tell you about Africa and nuclear power. While the world keeps lecturing the continent about energy insecurity, South Africa just quietly proved they can operate one of the most complex technologies on Earth better than most developed nations. This is the story of how Coburg Nuclear Power Station, Africa's only operational nuclear facility, just secured a 20-year license extension guaranteeing clean, stable power all the way to 2045. Why global experts who said this was impossible are now rewriting their assumptions and what this means for every African nation that's been told nuclear energy is too advanced for the continent. If you asked global analysts 20 years ago whether an African nation could run a nuclear power plant safely for decades, most would have laughed. They would have cited stereotypes about unstable grids, weak institutions, insufficient technical expertise, all the usual condescending phrases used to downplay African capability. Yet as those same analysts sit in their offices writing pessimistic reports, Africa just quietly pulled off something that forces them to rewrite everything they thought they knew. Coburg Nuclear Power Plant, standing near Cape Town since the early 1980s, has officially secured a 20-year operating license extension for Unit 2. This license means that uh, we have uh, an opportunity to um, derive uh, electricity um, uh, supply from um, these two uh, uh, reactors, which give us in total 1,860 megawatts. That means this African nuclear facility is now authorized to operate until 2045. Not because someone felt generous, but because Coburg proved through rigorous evaluation that it meets every single safety, structural, and regulatory standard expected of a world-class nuclear installation. Nuclear regulators do not compromise. Either the plant meets the long-term operational criteria or it doesn't. And Coburg met them fully. The National Nuclear Regulator conducted a detailed multi-year assessment covering everything from seismic safety to reactor pressure vessel integrity, emergency protocols, steam generator performance, radiation containment, cooling systems, personnel training levels, and compliance with international standards. The process is so strict that even some European facilities struggle to pass on the first attempt, yet Coburg did. This extension for Unit 2 comes right after Unit 1 received its own license renewal in July 2024. So, South Africa didn't just renew one reactor, they secured both units. Planting a flag in the future saying Africa will have nuclear stability for the next two decades. For years, Africa was told that nuclear energy was too advanced, too sensitive, too technical for the continent. Meanwhile, Coburg was quietly doing what many developed countries still haven't mastered maintaining nuclear reactors safely for 40 consecutive years. South Africa built this plant in the 1980s, ran it through political transitions, economic ups and downs, leadership changes, shifting global energy landscapes. And yet the plant never lost its status as one of the continent's most reliable energy assets. This 20-year extension locks in 1,860 megawatts of clean, reliable, round-the-clock electricity. Nuclear doesn't care about weather, time, or climate. It works when everything else pauses. It delivers constant baseload power that keeps steel plants running at 2 a.m., hospitals operational during storms, data centers stable when national demand spikes, and countries from sliding into the chaos of unpredictable blackouts. What happens when the sun sets on solar plants? When the wind slows over turbines? When drought lowers water levels at hydro dams? Africa knows the answer. Power cuts, factory shutdowns, economic losses, the painful cycle of load shedding that reshapes daily life. But Coburg's two units produce 1,860 megawatts of steady unbroken supply regardless of conditions. With the extension, South Africa secured the one thing every energy transition desperately needs. Time, 20 years to build renewable infrastructure properly, expand transmission lines, scale up storage solutions, diversify the energy mix without risking national collapse. This gives investors confidence because you can't grow manufacturing, mining, or digital economies if electricity goes off unpredictably. With Coburg secured until 2045, South Africa can attract industries that depend on consistent power. EV factories, smelters, hydrogen production plants, tech hubs, and when one African nation proves nuclear stability over four decades, it gives every other African nation permission to dream bigger. 
Coburg's success destroys the longest-running myth about Africa. That the continent can't handle highly advanced, high-risk, high-precision technology without foreign supervision, for decades Western commentators insisted any nuclear attempt would lead to disaster, corruption, or mismanagement. But here's what actually happened. Africa built a nuclear plant, ran it safely for over 40 years, and just earned regulatory approval that many richer countries still struggle to get. Unit 2 achieved a 100% energy availability factor for 241 consecutive days this year. 241 days of perfect performance. No interruptions. No failures. Just excellence. While countries that lectured Africa about energy maturity now deal with aging nuclear parks, decommissioning reactors, scrambling to restart programs they abandoned, Egypt is building the massive El Daba nuclear plant. A 4,800 megawatt project with four generation three plus reactors providing nearly 10% of Egypt's electricity by 2030. And just yesterday, November 19th, 2025, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and Russian President Vladimir Putin witnessed the installation of the first reactor pressure vessel. This isn't just a plan, it's happening right now. Nigeria is in active discussions for small modular reactors. Kenya built a nuclear energy regulatory authority preparing for its first reactor. Ghana, Rwanda, Uganda, and Zambia have all taken formal steps toward nuclear adoption, training engineers, drafting legislation, signing cooperation agreements. Because Coburg proved something that can't be debated anymore, Africa is ready. The secret is not the reactor. The secret is the people. Coburg's greatest strength is the African workforce behind it. Every control panel, every maintenance cycle, every safety drill, every emergency protocol was run by Africans, engineers trained to global nuclear standards, technicians who understand reactors like doctors understand patients, safety teams that treat every shift like a mission, regulators who refuse to compromise. This is not a foreign dominated plant not a charity project, not some outsourced miracle supervised by Western experts. Coburg is living proof that Africans mastered nuclear engineering and built their own culture of safety. Nuclear plants operate under the strictest rules on Earth. You can't skip steps. You can't improvise. A reactor forces everyone around it to become precise, structured, calm, accountable. South Africa built one of the strongest technical talent pipelines on the continent. Many of Africa's top nuclear engineers either trained at Coburg or learned from people who did. That's why when Egypt began building El Daba, when Nigeria explored small modular reactors, when Kenya formed its nuclear authority, they all referenced Coburg not as a warning but as a model. The world thought Africa would learn nuclear technology from the West, instead Africa is learning it from Africa. Valafi and Tuli, ESCOM's chief nuclear officer, said it perfectly. The granting of the 20-year life extension following last year's similar extension for Unit 1 is a result of hard work, focus, and dedication of our highly skilled and competent employees. The rigorous safety assessments and regulatory requirements demonstrate the depth of nuclear engineering talent available in South Africa that delivers high-quality jobs. Every country talking about energy transition loves to show off solar fields, wind farms, green hydrogen roadmaps. But here's the truth nobody admits publicly. None of those dreams survive without stable baseload power underneath them. You cannot build a modern, resilient, low-carbon future if your grid collapses when weather changes. South Africa's official plan, IRP 2025, the Integrated Resource Plan, envisions renewable energy growing massively battery storage stabilizing demand, cleaner gas filling gaps, hydropower integrating with regional partners, gradually reducing dependence on coal. But all of that depends on having one unshakable anchor, an electricity source that doesn't care about rain, wind, sunlight, droughts, or fuel price spikes. Nuclear power is that anchor. Without Coburg, South Africa would face nearly 2,000 megawatts disappearing from the grid. Replacing that with renewables alone would require enormous land, billions in investment, dozens of transmission lines and storage capacity that doesn't exist at scale. Replacing it with gas would drive up costs and create new dependencies on imported fuel. Replacing it with coal is politically toxic, environmentally unacceptable, 
economically backward. The 20-year extension gives breathing room, precious time to build new infrastructure properly instead of rushing into panic decisions. Think about the industries this stabilizes. Automotive manufacturing, mining, smelting, cement, digital infrastructure, logistics hubs, port operations, water treatment plants. Every sector needs reliable power or they collapse. With two more decades of secure baseload power, South Africa can push forward on big ambitions. EV production, green hydrogen exports, African battery manufacturing, deep tech clusters, massive renewable corridors. Without Coburg, these dreams would be impossible. With Coburg, they become achievable. Coburg is no longer just a power station. It is Africa's announcement that the continent will define its own energy destiny. For decades, Africa's story was written by others. Multilateral lenders decided what was appropriate. Donors dictated acceptable solutions. Most of those solutions kept Africa dependent. Endless diesel imports, donor-funded solar panels, emergency interventions, temporary fixes that looked good in reports but failed on the ground. But Coburg stands on the Cape Coast like a quiet rebellion, a reminder that Africa doesn't need to be told what it can or cannot handle, that Africa can operate the most advanced technologies humans have ever created, that African engineers kept this reactor stable through storms, political transitions, economic turbulence, global energy crises. Think about Egypt building El Daba with Russian support generating 4,800 megawatts, more than double Coburg's output. Think about Nigeria preparing small modular reactors that could transform the national grid, Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, Rwanda, laying legal and scientific foundations for nuclear adoption. These nations look at Coburg and say if South Africa could build this culture of safety, so can we. Africa's future energy landscape will not be defined by scarcity. It will be defined by ambition. Nuclear energy gives Africa something no other energy source can promise at this moment. Decades of stable, clean, predictable power, on which entire economies can be built. Imagine the Africa of 2040. An Africa where renewable energy thrives because nuclear provides stability beneath it. Where countries export green minerals not as raw ore but as finished products because electricity is abundant. Where manufacturing hubs rival Asia because the continent no longer suffers chronic power instability. Where data centers, robotics facilities, EV industries, biotech labs operate at global standards because the grid no longer collapses. Coburg's success sends a shockwave across the continent. A psychological shift. A new confidence. It tells African leaders you don't have to accept limited options. You can leap directly into high-tech, high-precision energy systems that even wealthy nations struggle to manage. Africa is not afraid of that future. Africa is running toward it. Because if one African country can run nuclear flawlessly for 40 years, what happens when 10 African nations master it? That's the question the world isn't ready for, and the future Africa is preparing to answer. Coburg has earned the NOSCAR Safety Award from the National Occupational Safety Association more than 14 times. It's been recognized by the International Atomic Energy Agency. It's part of a global group of over 120 nuclear reactors that have safely extended their service beyond the original 40-year design life. This isn't luck. This is African excellence in action. This is what happens when a continent refuses to be limited by other people's low expectations. This is what happens when African engineers get the resources and respect they deserve. The extension to 2045 means children born today in South Africa will grow up with reliable electricity. It means students can study engineering knowing there are real high-tech careers waiting. It means entrepreneurs can build businesses without fear of constant power failures, destroying their investments. For the rest of Africa watching this unfold, the blueprint exists. The proof is real. The pathway is clear. Nuclear energy is not some distant impossible dream. It's happening right now on African soil run by African hands. When African nations start procurement processes for new nuclear capacity, they're not begging for help. They're negotiating as equals, 
demanding technology transfer, local job creation, skills development, because Coburg proved Africa can handle it. This is the future taking shape. An Africa that doesn't just consume energy technology, but masters it. An Africa that doesn't just import solutions, but creates them. An Africa that doesn't apologize for its ambitions, but pursues them with confidence backed by proven success.